What's up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com. Today I'm taking a look at the beeswax filled older honey boot from the San Francisco based company Sutro. Now the older honey boot is developed with beeswax again, which actually isn't that uncommon for leather, but I still thought it was a pretty cute name. And this is like a quasi chucker. It's not quite a chucker boot because those usually have three pairs of eyelets. This has four, I guess you'd call it like an ankle high boot or an ankle boot, but it's relatively short. It's less than five and a half inches tall and most heritage boots are about six inches. The heel is relatively low as well. So overall it's a pretty low profile boot. I would say besides the heights and the fact that it's fully lined with calfskin leather and the fact that it's hand stitched, which is gonna be really appealing to a lot of guys. The big thing that really stands out about this boot is this cut in the back of the shaft here, which gives it more freedom for the ankle to move around when you're wearing them, which is an upside I've been wearing these for quite a while, as you can see. And it's true that these feel more like uh, like low cut shoes than actual boots because it's nice and open up the top. That said, many people I know have seen these boots and the first thing they think of is Peter Pan's boots. So that is something you're gonna have to deal with people saying if you like this open ankle look. So this leather is full grain leather from Lafarc Tannery in Mexico. That's a word that's very hard to say with my accent, Lafarc. They're a uh, really high quality tannery. They produce a lot of leathers for big name brands and they included this little note they said it was developed organically slash naturally. Now they say it's vegetable tanned on their site, but they told me it's more like it's almost all vegetable tanned, a little bit of chrome in there to make the leather softer. And they give tone and color to the leather with vegetal creams, like creams that get their color from natural sources, tree barks, pomegranate, stuff like that. Now I have been wearing these for a few weeks, which is why they do not look new. But to be honest, this leather looked pretty old when I first got it. They say they quote, strive for the rugged vintage look which is fine if that's what you're after, but Sutro does get quite a bit of criticism for the leather looking kind of worn and spotty. Like I've been wearing these for a while, but these wrinkles here, the boot came with these, you know? I really haven't seen anything like this before. I think the leather is okay for the price point, but uh, it's not really anything to write home about. Also the fact that this leather is not heavily treated, which some people do like to be fair, it means they don't repel water. And they say this on their site, like they're not waterproof. So there are a few things to remember when it comes to leather care. Now Sutro recommends you use a natural cream to condition this leather and they strongly urge you not to use quote harsh balms or creams. I'm not totally sure what that means. I imagine they're referring to creams that have petroleum in it or something like that, some kind of solvent. So I guess that might put Venetian shoe cream off limits if that's really important to you. They actually sell their own conditioner on their site which is like an all natural uh, water based cream. And they also sell it with a cloth and with a sponge for 10 bucks, which I think is a pretty good deal. I think they'd be fine with you using like Sophia's Renovator. That's pretty all natural as far as creams go. Uh, Cobbler's Choice is also a pretty good company. It's a new one, but they also sell all natural sorts of products like that. You could also use mink oil. They say on the site you may if you want to, but they do caution that it will darken the leather. As I mentioned in my video, comparing mink oil and some other creams, which you can check out right there. They also told me that over time and with a lot of wear, the boots may develop or probably will develop a white film over the leather itself, which they say is the natural oils themselves like coming out of the leather, building around the leather. So all you need to do then is just to get a cloth and wipe it off and then, you know, replace those oils with one of these natural creams we were talking about. And they recommend you do that at least once a month, which to be honest, I think it's probably gonna be a bit too much care than a lot of guys are gonna be willing to put on these shoes. But hey, if you really like the look of them, you might find it worth it. So this outsole is a combination of rubber and leather. So where your foot touches the ground, it's rubber, the rest of the sole where there isn't much contact with the ground and not much weight put on it, that's leather. So it actually has pretty decent traction. Um, there's also a stacked leather heel here. After that, you get a rubber midsole, there's a metal shank, and there's a layer of polyurethane and cork. And there is a removable comfort polyurethane insole. So that means over time, uh, it won't quite contour to the foot in quite the same way as like a leather and cork insole, but the shock absorption is quite good. And from the get-go, there's not much of a break in here. 
Now my true size is an 11.5. I got an 11 for these and they fit pretty well. I will say the laces are quite open. So I think an 11.5 would also have fit fine. I don't know, but the 11 worked perfectly well. I quite like the last with these. Like it's not an especially sleek or dressy kind of boot, but I do have room to wiggle my toes in the end, which I really, really like. They tell me that they use Italian last because they aesthetically follow the non-symmetrical lines of the human foot and they add some volume to it for the US market. And yeah, again, they're not very sleek, but they're not something you're gonna wear with a suit anyway, really, especially given the type of leather, but it's not very wide or blocky either. So I'm a big fan of this fit. Uh, I was able to wiggle my toes in the end. And also the arch support, very, very good. And all that stuff in the sole I mentioned earlier, means the shock absorption is also pretty good. So comfort wise, I didn't have any complaints. Now, a pair of these boots is gonna run you 200 to $220, which is very, very inexpensive for a boot like this. Uh, with a full grain vegetable tan leather, with a calfskin lining, with a Goodyear welt. It's very unusual to see a pair of boots like this for under $300. So the price really is Sutro's like strongest point. They're very well known for having such inexpensive boots. And it definitely makes things like the leather being kind of so-so absolutely forgivable in my opinion. So why would you want to get a pair of older boots? I just said it, I'll say it again. They are stupid inexpensive for the quality that you are getting here. And there's a lot of sort of uh, boutique-y touches that you don't normally see Unlike any boots, especially boots at this price point, the fact that it's hand stitched is a big deal. Uh, fully lined with glove skin leather, it's a big deal. And the leather is also hand creamed and burnished, which is something that a lot of people, especially people who are really, really into boots, they find it pretty remarkable you can get that sort of touch with leather at this price point. I also wanna say, I really did find them quite comfortable. I really like the uh, arch support. I really like the shock absorption. The fit was nice. I got plenty of room to move my toes around the outside as well. Plus this little opening here for the ankle, I get that it's quite unusual to look at but it does feel a lot nicer on your ankle. So that's, I think it's a pro, at least in that regard. Uh, there are a few downsides, I think, with the older boot. Look, it is a weird looking boot. This open ankle here, again, uh, it looks like something uh, Peter Pan or perhaps some kind of elf would wear. I definitely need <laughs> to say that is something people are gonna say to you. I don't think it's a massive deal, honestly. I mean, look, any pants are going to cover this anyway. So really all it's gonna do is make your ankles feel a bit more free, a bit more airy, and people aren't really going to see it. If you're the kind of guy who likes to roll up your salvage jeans to show off the full glory of the boots you're wearing, you probably won't wanna do that with these boots. But as far as regular pants, like I think they fit in fine, but they're unusual looking, definitely. I gotta say that. Uh, I also wanted to point out they are not very water resistant. This leather in particular, it's not great in the water. Uh, they're not very waterproof, not water resistant. And so a lot of people when they buy boots, they think the point of a boot is so it can be like rugged and endure a lot of tough conditions. That's definitely not the case with these boots. Uh, they're more boots that you're gonna wear. They're more fashion focused boots, I guess is all I'm trying to say. Finally, the main complaint I hear about these boots and this brand in general, the leather, it does look weird. It's old looking leather. When you get the leather, it already looks old. Now there are definitely a lot of people where they can't wait for their boots to look this old. So there's definitely a market for it. A lot of people don't see it to be a big deal, especially with the cost, but definitely it really bears emphasizing that uh, when I got these out of the box, I was quite surprised at the way the leather looked. So uh, that's something you got to expect and something you have to like if you want to get a pair of these boots. All right, those are my thoughts on the older Honey Boot from Sutro. Definitely one of the more unusual and memorable boots that I have reviewed. I think for this price, like it's worth thinking about, but there's so many idiosyncrasies to this boot. It really depends on your own individual preferences anyway. Uh, the full written review and a bunch of pretty pictures are in the description below. I encourage you to check that out. And also make sure you subscribe because I've got a whole lot more boot reviews and comparisons coming up.